we are chemical systems. I mean, I hate to break it to you folks, but we're made of drugs, right? Yeah. That's why drugs work. We're biochemical engines. Our brains are biochemical engines that run on neurotransmitters. These plant compounds are our neurotransmitters, essentially. I mean, you know, they were in plants a long time before they were in our brains, before there was even complex brains enough to utilize these things. And, our, you know, in the course of evolution, we internalized these things and adapted them to our own, like, internal signaling processes. So now we have the, you know, the neurological tools, if you will, to talk to the plants, you know, they've always been talking to us. Now we can actually have a conversation and the con you get into the conversation and the conversation is, you know, uh, you monkeys need to move to the next level. You need to get more conscious of your place in nature, our place in nature as a species, uh, realize that we're not separate from it. We're part of it. And if nature goes down, we go down. I mean, there is no... There is no escape. There's no ticket out of here. Uh, not yet, anyway. And uh, and the plants are the tools to understand this. You know, I mean, there's good scientific studies now that show that psilocybin, uh, which is the one that's been studied, can reliably induce a state that you might call a mystical experience. I prefer to call it a transcendent experience, but the, the, you know, the nugget of the experience that it can elicit under the right experiences is, a, is an understanding of uh, we are all one, you know, we're not separate. That's the core of the, I think, the mystical insight that psychedelics bring about. Why should our brains even have evolved to have that kind of experience? If it's not a way of, you know, kind of, uh, well, I don't know, uh, being able to initiate that conversation with, uh, with the rest of species. I mean, they're counting on us, you know, because never before we've, you know, civilization and, and, and humanity has impacted nature in adverse ways as long as we've been around, as long as we've had fire, you know, I mean, fire back in the Paleolithic and even earlier was a tremendously, not necessarily destructive force, but it was a transformative force on ecosystems. We didn't particularly use it in a conscious way. <laughs> we, we used it in a way that, that served our, our purposes. Uh, but now with uh, 7 billion people on the earth and counting and technologies that no one ever imagined that we'd have at our fingertips, what we do now really matters, you know, because we, because before that nature, the homeostatic mechanisms that tended to take nature, keep nature in balance, you know, we could cause tremendous ecological destruction and nature would eventually, you know, that would fade away and nature would come back into balance. Now we're actually in danger of permanently screwing up those mechanisms. So we actually have to kind of consciously intervene or be conscious of what we're doing because the consequences of what we do are just so much greater.